Welcome to Random Hacking Video Channel. Today we will learn about two major types of XML attacks known as XPath Query Injection and XML External Entity Attacks. XML or Extensible Markup Language was designed to be both human and machine readable which supports data storage in hierarchical manner and even enables flexible communication between applications. Today XML is used almost everywhere whether in the form of web configuration file, database file, API payloads and even in Android programming. To learn more about XML file structures and formats, visit W3Schools website link given in the video description. Let's move into the practical demonstration of XPath injection and XXE attacks. Caution, please do not try this on public website without owner's permission. This video is only meant for ethical and learning purposes. XPath is a query language similar to SQL which is mainly used to query data from XML database. Let's have a look into the following bookstore database which holds book names and its prices. Similar to any XML file, the XML database also contains a header that describes version and encoding format. It also contains nodes structured in hierarchical manner each having child-parent relations. Each child element nodes holds a value or the actual data also known as atomic values are the only nodes with no children and parent. Since the XML holds data in tree-like structure, using XPath we can query just like traversing the OS file system directories. Let's further see some examples of XPath queries used in web applications. As an example, to check the price of Harry Potter book, the query will be started with the root element node followed by its child nodes in the path and using operators to match the book name. Similarly, in place of arithmetic conditions, we can also use built-in XML functions such as the following to query data in more efficient manner. We can see that the following database file also holds sensitive user information which becomes more riskier for an organization when the same file is linked to a vulnerable web application requests. Such as the following web page that takes inputs from drop-down, and displays movie names based on selected genres. Let's check by inputting a quote and numerical one to check the response. The error confirms that the website is vulnerable to XPath injection and the user inputs are not encoded before sending this to an XML database. Let's build our first XPath query by assuming the hard-coded XPath in the web logic, using which we will be able to combine our own malicious XPath query. Also let's assume that the developers may have utilized XPath contains function which is most commonly used to match strings provided by the users just like in if conditions. Since we do not know what nodes we should be querying, we will be using blind injection methods such as injecting commonly used node names that may store sensitive information. In the place of the user input variable, we will be combining another query by carefully closing the hard-coded statements with quotes and parentheses to avoid errors. Please note that the double forward slashes in front of every blind nodes acts as a relative path, which means the query will be executed if it finds the mentioned nodes anywhere in the hierarchy. We are ready with our XPath query containing blind nodes or with each other, let's injecting the query in the input query string from the URL. The query successfully returned with usernames and password which confirms that the XML movie database also holds user-sensitive data. Please note that we can use double forward slash with asterisk symbol which will act as a wildcard, means all the data stored by every relative nodes in the XML file will be returned. So far we have seen how one can exploit XML database enabled web applications by injecting XPath queries. XML files can be also used for inputting data into web application using XML parsers. This is being achieved using document definition type, an SGML definition that defines list of validated elements and attributes in an XML document. 
The following is an example of DTD embedded XML file which defines some variables known as entities. Defining internal entities are useful when same value needs to be used repeatedly in XML body. DTD enabled XML can be also used in user authentication such as in following example where credentials are being captured in the defined entities and are called upon XML body for parsing. The following web page allows logged in users to reset its secret code. When traffic is intercepted, we can see that it sends username in XML format and responds back with the username value. Let's further see if the web page accepts a request with a DTD defined entity as an username. The same defined entity will be called in the XML body as follows. The response successfully shows the value of the defined entity and we can proceed to manipulate the web page using external entity attacks. DTDs allows developers to accept values from external files and assign the same to the defined entity. This can be achieved just by adding a system keyword followed by path or URL of a file. Besides of its advantages, the feature also allows malicious users to exfiltrate certain sensitive files by linking these into entities such as Linux pass WD file, causing an XML external entity attack. Since the page displays back the user supplied entity value in the response, this time it will also respond back with contents of pass WD file of the web server. The attacker can further exfiltrate more sensitive file from the web server using the same method as per his motives. If you think you have learned something from this video, please hit like and subscribe to our channel to stay tuned for new hacking videos.